So today we are going to learn about waterfall model. So as mentioned in this uh, image, uh, these are the steps which can be followed while uh, doing the waterfall model. So this is, first of all, I just uh, like to tell that this is a traditional model. Nowadays, uh, people started using agile technology, agile model in many of the companies are preferring that. So before that, so waterfall model was there in picture. Still, today also some of the uh, product-based companies are using uh, waterfall model because um, they, they are having very less uh, requirements uh, or enhancements. So in that case, uh, they are not uh, using the agile technology. <clears throat> because every here, uh, the first thing in waterfall model is that here everything is recorded or maintained in a spreadsheet format or manual format. So it is a time consuming process. So that's why um, uh, this new generation has shifted to agile model. So these are the steps uh, of waterfall model, which uh, everybody should know. Uh, first is the requirement gathering and analysis. Second, software design. And next, the implementation of that software design, testing and maintenance. So. These are the steps which are used by a various team members at their level. Now, the function of business analyst is to gather the requirement from the client or the customer and whatever requirement uh, the client has given that should be converted into such a format so that it can be understandable to developer and the tester. So in that case, uh, the business analyst will communicate with client in weekly meetings and he will <clears throat> finalize the requirement. Then he will be having the core team meeting with uh, test testers, developers and users. So from that, he will clarify the requirement uh, from the client by doing the analysis of it. Once the requirement gathering phase is over, the next phase in the waterfall model is software design. So before starting actual implementation, for each software, there is a requirement of designing that particular software. Like oh, we can say uh, as an overall architecture or overall view of that particular software. So this is done in this phase. So once a developer get an idea about how the software will be uh, designed and uh, what should be the uh, various modules involved in that particular uh, requirement, so that can be understandable to the developer in this module. Okay, so this particular uh, software design is done by the team members like business analysts, developers. So combinedly they will discuss with the client the requirement and they will finalize the design of that software. Then the next phase in the waterfall model, which is very important phase is the implementation. In this, the developer will try to <clears throat> perform uh, the implementation on the design software and the coding and he, they will develop a module what as per the requirement of uh, the customer or client once they have completed that uh, implementation they will perform a unit testing on uh, that uh, implemented module the what is unit testing now the unit testing here is the testing of a single module uh, which is done at the development environment setup as all of us know, there are three uh, setups involved in every uh, software uh, design lifecycle process. The first one, that is development uh, environment. Second is your uh, testing environment, which is also called as QA environment. And third one is user environment, which is also called as production environment. So after implementation, the first environment of the project come into existence picture which is called as the development environment in which the developer will um, test the model which they have developed at their level. Once the unit testing has been completed by the developer, that module is given to the testers for actual in-deep testing. So the tester will perform uh, the testing on the QA environment once that module is deployed by developer on the QA. And whatever, if any uh, bug or defect is found uh, to uh, testers, then testers will try to uh, give or explain that defects to the developer. 
So at the starting phase, what testers will do, testers will try to <clears throat> find out the defect uh, by uh, testing that particular model um, uh, in one eye. So once they will find any defect, so they will immediately notify to the developer and then developer will start uh, testing on it. Again, they will work on it and they will uh, remove that error or uh, they will try to resolve that debug or defect and they will resubmit it to the tester. So uh, in this complete cycle, the tester will continue their testing uh, what, once the, they have got uh, that module at their end. <coughs> After that, there is one more type of testing which is called as user testing. Once the tester have completed their testing at their level, they will submit that module to the user for testing purpose. And tester will complete testing at his level uh, for uh, the model. And then, uh, then that particular uh, module, or we can say a design uh, or uh, implemented design will go to the production uh, deployment so that user can properly use it. Once a, a software is completely designed, so this particular cycle, requirement gathering, software design, implementation, and testing, this will carry out um, in loop till a complete software will get built. Once the software will get built, it will come to the maintenance phase and it is deployed to um, uh, production environment, it will come to the maintenance stage. In that case, uh, when the user are using that software, that complete software, they will uh, find out the defect or they will find, they, they may forget the issue or any defect while using that particular software. And then they will again file a bug or defect to the team. So in this way, th uh, the maintenance will be carried out. Okay. So this is how the waterfall model works. So these are the basic steps which are followed. So as it is called as the waterfall model, here there is no any specific tool is used for maintaining all these phases. So it is only uh, kept on uh, like whatever things are there that are kept on, on a spreadsheet or Google sheet or we can say uh, the screenshots are taken in the uh, Google Docs. Okay, so it is time consuming process. That's why a bigger software industries are avoiding to use this model. If there is uh, any software in the maintenance, then only they are trying to use this uh, waterfall model for saving the cost of uh, agile technologies, uh, purchasing the agile models. Okay, now what are the advantage of this uh, particular waterfall model? The advantage, uh, first advantage is that it is easy to implement and maintain because everything is manual. Second advantage, the initial phase of requirement gathering and analysis is helpful for saving later in the development phase. Okay, the third advantage is resources requirement is minimum and after completion of each phase, testing is done. Okay, why resource requirement is minimum here? Because uh, every time we are testing uh, the small, small things which are deployed on the dev QA, so the time, uh, time and the resources which are required uh, will be less. So therefore, uh, it is called as it requires a very minimum or we can say a less amount of uh, time and uh, require resources for the, when the testing is done. Now, what are the disadvantages of this waterfall model? Okay, once the requirement is finalized by the uh, BA, so that requirement will not be get changed or updated even if uh, anybody want to update it because um, this is the drawback uh, and uh, that requirement will go into uh, the implementation testing and UAT, user acceptance testing. Then only uh, after this complete uh, completion of this cycle, uh, the client has to file or the user has to file a new requirement instead of updating uh, the previous requirement. Okay, so that is the disadvantage of it. You can, the second disadvantage is you cannot make changes to the previous phase when you are in the next phase. As I said, uh, there is no uh, updation possible in the requirement. So once any uh, any particular phase is completed, so then there is no any uh, change in the previous uh, stage occurs here. The third disadvantage is you cannot start the next phase until the previous phase is completed. Okay, uh, in case of agile model, it is possible that you can start the next phase if some of the part of or some of the portion of the previous phase is completed. But in case of uh, this um, 
waterfall model this thing is not possible you cannot start the next phase until the previous phase is completed for example like if you have completed requirement analysis then only you will go to the uh, software design phase or once the software design phase is completed then only implementation will start it is not possible that parallelly two, two phases are running okay like uh, software design and implementation parallelly occurring so these three are the main disadvantages for this waterfall model now the next model that is called as V model. Okay, you can see here it is a V shaped uh, the diagram. You can see so these are the phases. The same phases are there, but here the phases are occurring parallelly with each other. Okay, so you see here the first is the requirement gathering phase, as like a waterfall model. Similar, uh, the function is occurring over here. Okay, then software specification, like which software we need that is designed. Okay, that is defined. Then there is high level the design, as I said you, uh, we need the high level design over here uh, uh, so that architecture we will be uh, getting to the user. Then low level design means in deep design, uh, deep, the software design will be offered here. Then coding, the next phase is coding in which uh, we are performing the coding. Uh, actually, the developer will uh, do this task. Then in the testing phase, you can see there are four different testings are there in the V model. First is unit testing. As I told you, this unit testing is used for testing a single individual model. And this integration testing is a second uh, in, uh, test type of testing in which we are testing the um, um, module and uh, two models. Uh, suppose uh, you have performed the login models and what are the dependencies of that particular login module? So all those dependencies will be tested here in the integration testing. Then there is a system testing in which we are performing uh, the testing with other model which are connected with the newly developed model. Okay, means is there any impact on the other module or not? So that is tested in the system testing. And then acceptance testing, which is performed by the user at his level. Now I'll show you what how these uh, types are there. For example, we will just take one uh, website of uh, I suppose um, any of the website we will take. Now let's take the example of Google.com. Okay, so here uh, there is a option of uh, Google sign in. Okay, Google sign in page. Okay, so here you can see in this sign in page. Okay, so this is the sign in page. Now I already have an account, so we will just take some other uh, uh, website or we can just uh, go through the google.com. Okay, so here you can see this is the Google search option. Okay. Now suppose this is a requirement of any client, uh, Google, uh, you have to implement a Google search option. So in that case, whenever a developer is implementing this button, Google search, so this particular Google search button is connected with uh, multiple things like uh, this uh, query bar. This is your text box where you are putting your query. So whatever query you are putting, uh, that once you will click on this Google search button, that query will get uh, Paste over here. For example, I am just searching pictures of uh, suppose um, God. Okay, so in that case, whenever it is giving me, uh, whenever I am clicking after writing here uh, the query, what do you find here? Pictures of a God. Okay, so after writing this query. when I'm clicking on the search button, okay. So here that search button is here. So it is connected with this particular taskbar or the search bar we can say. Um, so, so these two are interconnected with each other. Again, uh, you can put here uh, the search by voice also. So this is also interconnected with this Google search. So in case of unit testing, we are just only testing the functionality of this button. As I've shown here in the PPT, this is the unit testing. So here we are just testing this requirement as per requirement, this particular button. Okay, whenever I'm putting query and clicking on that button, automatically uh, the thing, whatever I want, get searched by using this button. So like that, I will test. But in case of uh, integration testing, what I will do, I have to test the connectivities in between the various modules of this Google search engine. For example, suppose I'm searching something uh, here, pictures, 
only okay so in that case whenever i am putting this pictures word so uh, so we will check whatever query i am putting here uh, through that may be through this uh, search by voice or whatever search by image so it should be uh, <clears throat> properly um, interconnected with this google search option so i should not get any error uh, here while uh, the connectivity in between the uh, regular or similar module which are connected to with this google search button okay so this is for like the integration testing whenever this module is connected with some other more previously developed module then it should not give an error okay now the next testing that is system testing in case of system testing we are testing uh, all the interdependent parts also uh, this uh, the which parts are dependent on this particular google search engine one button once this particular google search button is deployed is there are any impact on any other module or any previously developed part or not so that is tested here in the system testing okay so now the what are the advantages and disadvantages we will see here so the first advantage is simple to use because the testing activities like planning test uh, designing are already done here uh, so whenever you can see here in this diagram i have shown like uh, uh, parallel um, things are there so here whenever user requirement will come the acceptance test plan will be decided over here actually then like whatever the final testing documentation or test what you can say the scripts will be designed or defined over here parallelly or at the planning of the testing is done again so in the software specification phase it is connected with the system testing so the plan which we need for testing the system so it is decided over here similarly at the level of high level design integration testing is defined uh, the plan of this integration testing is defined and unit testing is defined at the low level design so this plan is already done uh, whenever any requirement come so that is the advantage the next advantage is this model increases the possibilities of success and it saves the time because the planning is already done so once uh, the development has been started so it will be a time saving process the the third advantage is that bugs are mostly found at the initial stage why bugs are uh, mostly found at the initial stage because we know as the we have decided what things which things we have to do so the testers will do overall testing by according to the plan first and they will immediately file a bug or inform to the developer to resolve that bug so the time required to resolve the bug will get reduced till the testers will complete their testing so that is the advantage of this uh, model the disadvantages of this particular uh, model is that it is a strict model and the software developed during the implementation phase so initial prototypes of the products are not available okay so we will not get any initial pro uh, prototype of this product because the software uh, implementation is done in the uh, development phase actually uh, then only we will get the prototype the next disadvantage is if there are modifications in the middle you need to update the documentation here it is possible to modify the requirement in middle but each time uh, the ba or we can say business analyst has to uh, modify or update the documentation so it will impact on overall uh, performance of the system because uh, once the requirement has been um, changed or updated in some amount then he has to inform to the developer and testers as well so they have to change their plan in some amount according to the requirement so that is the main uh, drawback of this new model okay so this is all about the two models which we have learned today one is waterfall model and second one is um, v model which are the traditional model and right now uh, mostly uh, only uh, 20 to 10% of the companies are using these two models and uh, nowadays people have started uh, on automation tools or we can say using of uh, agile models uh, through jira tool or zoho tool so um, that is the main drawbacks of this both the tools okay